Welcome to LendCourse tutorial on sound masking. This review will cover what sound masking is and the two critical criteria for any sound masking system. Sound masking is a sound that makes speech unintelligible and a quiet space more comfortable. It is a complex sound that must have a broad band, meaning a sound that covers a very wide band on the frequencies that we can hear. And it must be a sound that is non-intrusive and non-fatiguing. Some people may mistake sound masking as either white or pink noise. It is neither. Sound masking has its own acoustical signature and properties. White sound is a sound that has equal power at all of the frequencies and when listened to sounds much like pure static on the radio. Pink sound has equal power at all of the octaves and therefore sounds much smoother and more pleasant. Pink sound is a closer approximation of what a proper sound masking system should sound like. In the technical sense, sound masking is a broadband sound from roughly 65 hertz, your bass, to 13 kilohertz, or your treble, that is also non-repetitive and has an approximate 3 to 5 decibel roll-off per octave into the higher frequencies. How does sound masking work? Sound masking works by gently raising the ambient background sound uniformly in an environment with a clean, consistently random, broadband, non-intrusive sound. In environments where there is too little broadband ambient background, noise and speech can be easily heard. Imagine sitting in a quiet library. Now imagine someone talking or tapping a pen. Think how intrusive even the loud whispering or the tapping of the pen is. Both sounds are quite intrusive and will break your concentration. Now imagine sitting at the beach. The beach is a restful place, a place where it's easy to collect your thoughts. The beach, however, compared to the library, is a place with lots of sound, pleasant sounds, broadband sounds, sounds that are similar to pink sound and sound masking. The ocean waves are a wonderful background sound that create an environment that is not only comfortable, but a place where sounds around you appear to disappear. The ocean is natural sound masking, with waves generally louder than the other incoming noises around. It masks the sounds around you as you sit on the beach. Therefore, sound masking works like a signal-to-noise ratio, or put another way for the designed workplace, a speech-to-ambient background sound ratio. Ambient background sound is essentially any sound that is not in the foreground, such as direct speech. Ambient sound is simply background noise. An example of ambient background sound to speech is a crowded coffee shop. There are people talking all around you, which is background noise. However, it is an environment where you are still able to do independent work as well as have a conversation with someone. When ambient background sound is low, you can hear speech. When ambient background sound is raised, it is difficult to hear speech. That is how sound masking works. In today's workplace, office design is creating more open, collaborative environments and reducing the number of closed office spaces. The trend is towards more energy efficient and greener materials such as reclaimed woods, metals, and glass. These are all hard surfaces which reflect sound. Sound absorption materials like carpet, fabric partitions, and even acoustical ceiling tile are disappearing from workplace design. Sound masking is one of the few options for managing sound and helping to create more comfortable environments in which to work. How do we evaluate sound masking and know when it is any good? Let us turn now to the two critical criteria for any sound masking system. The two criteria are privacy and comfort. And remember, the only consumable for sound masking is the sound. The industry maintains a standard for speech privacy known as ASTM E1130. The standard says that if you have an articulation index, or AI, of 0.2 or less, you achieve normal speech privacy. If you have an AI of 0.05 or less, you achieve confidential speech privacy. The articulation index, in essence, is a measurement of the percentage of a sentence that can be understood. Clinical researchers have determined that if an individual can hear more than 20% of what is being spoken, then they are able to understand the conversation. If you hear less than 20%, a person is not able to discern the content of the conversation, and therefore you have speech privacy. Most manufacturers of sound masking equipment are able to achieve speech privacy. Again, with a loud enough sound or noise, you can mask speech. 
In the quest for masking speech, the more important criteria really is obtaining comfort while maintaining speech privacy. So let's turn and look at comfort. To help us understand sound, let us look at an example that many can easily relate to. Let's look at the lighting industry. Imagine yourself in an office environment that uses fluorescent lights. Imagine the lights from those fluorescents has a very narrow color tone. For instance, the light has a red color and a blue color. Now imagine the light is also flickering. Imagine that you walk away from the flickering fluorescent light into the sunlight. Instantly you feel relief as you walk into a uniform, full broadband of light frequencies. All the colors are now natural, easy on your eyes, and relaxing. The flickering fluorescent light fatigues us because it forces our minds to gather the information of a repeat and process the lack of color. We strain to filter this information so that we can think about what we are seeing and doing. When you walk out of the office into the sunlight, you are relieved because you are now receiving the full broadband spectrum. You are instantly relaxed because your mind is no longer processing specific data. Sounds and sound masking work in a very similar fashion. There are five criteria that make up a comfortable sound for sound masking. Starting with the consumable itself, the sound, you need a broadband sound with an environment to make it comfortable. Like the lighting example, the origin of the sound needs to cover the full spectrum. Sound masking systems that only deliver a portion of that spectrum, like bad fluorescence, will cause fatigue and discomfort. Comfort quality comes from a full broadband spectrum. Second is a sound with a proper wraparound. If something has a pattern or a repeat, like a flickering light, and we can detect it, then it has a poor and improper wraparound. This is also called cycling, and our brains pick that up as information, which in turn fatigues us because we try to push out that information. Nothing in nature actually cycles, which is one of the things that makes nature so relaxing. Number three on the list is multiple noise sources. Again, there is a natural phenomenon within the random environment which creates comfort. Babbling brooks, oceans, winds across plains of wheat, all of these random sounds create comfort and our body relaxes to it. It is not information overload. Uniformity of sound is our fourth critical criteria. A sound masking system must have no more than a tolerance of plus or minus one decibel or dB. The industry standard has been, and many systems allow, a tuning differential of plus or minus 3 dB. This is a tremendous amount of noise difference and creates a condition of a potential 6 decibel swing. Therefore, imagine that you are targeting 47 dB for your sound masking system. This is a smart volume level for most sound masking systems to create comfort and privacy. One area is tuned at 44 decibels, and the next area is tuned at 50 dB. That's a 6 decibel swing. Both areas are now problems. The area at 44 dB may be comfortable, but there is no privacy. At 50 decibels, you certainly may attain speech privacy, but it will not be a comfortable environment. Never underestimate the importance of a uniform sound. A system must be consistent and non-disruptive throughout the space. Last, tuning flexibility. A sound masking system should allow you to adjust it in order to meet the criteria of privacy and comfort. All performance specifications must lead us to speech privacy and a comfortable sound. Now, why do people put sound masking in a space? People are an organization's greatest asset. It is the intellectual capital, hard work, effort, energy, and time that an individual invests that makes any organization successful. The individual, however, is also the most expensive asset of an organization. Therefore, giving the individual the ability to think and do their work is paramount to everything else. That is why we should provide them with quality light, heat, air conditioning, shelter, and a work environment that enables for concentration. Employees will only produce their best work in a non-stressful, comfortable work environment. Without proper acoustics, that work environment is unattainable. Here's a bonus area for you. The one question most asked regarding sound masking is, what is the difference between white noise and pink noise? Again, white noise and pink noise are not sound masking. However, white noise charts like white light. It has all of the same power or energy across all of the frequencies. Pink noise charts like pink light and has equal energy per octave. 
An octave is the interval between one pitch and another with half or double its frequency. In low frequencies, you have a narrow column, for example, between the octave 63 and 125. And in higher frequencies, a wider column between octaves, 2,000 and 4,000. Think of energy as a marble. If you took 10 marbles and put them into a narrow column, it would rise higher than if you took 10 marbles and put them into a wider column where it would flatten out. Pink noise energy is reduced in the higher frequencies. Interestingly, because of the way our ear listens and weights frequencies for sound pressure level, white noise sounds hissy. With many high frequencies, pink noise sounds flatter and more comfortable. That concludes our presentation. We hope you have found this tutorial helpful and insightful. For a complete list of criteria to consider with a sound masking system, please download the Smart Checklist. The checklist and more information can be found at Lencore.com. Thank you for your time.